Almighty, Holy, Holy, are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is the land? And you are holy, holy. Oh! <laughs> 
What is left? What is left? Praise you, Jesus. I praise you. Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank yes, you for this beautiful Lord. morning, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. day father and bless the people who have come here we give you all honor and we pray that you help us to receive your word and listen your voice father and we ask your anointing and power your spirit to move in our midst today lord we bless your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. you all may amen and amen I was talking about once again, I'll just uh, give you a quick recap. Five ways to overcome the flesh and be alive in the spirit. And number one I was talking about is bring your thoughts under the control. It's very important for us to understand if you really want to live a life of victory. And if you really want to live a Christian life, because there are many people, they are living like a Christian. But if you really want to live a victorious Christian life and a victorious believer life, then you need to understand there has to be a control over your thought realm. Your thoughts has to be controlled, you know. Uh, one thing we need to understand, we are not the way we used to be. God has changed us. He has transformed us. He has given us a new life. Somebody say, I received a new life. So we got a new life and this new life is only because of the blood of Jesus. You know, we are redeemed. Somebody say redeemed. We are redeemed by the blood. What do you mean by redeemed? Redeemed is a person who is, has been in a bondage, who have been into some guilt, who have been into some kind of uh, uh, yoke. And it's because of uh, Jesus and his blood and his sacrifice, we are redeemed. So once you are redeemed, you are out. You are free. You are like a free bird. You now can do the things which you were not able to do that so that is very important for us to understand this morning that i am redeemed by the lord my thought has to be redeemed i cannot uh, think the way i used to think i cannot walk the way i used to walk i cannot even do the things the way that i have been doing it i am totally a changed person i'm totally a transformed man the problem with the people that they are not growing in life the problem with the people that they do not understand uh, the christian life they do not understand what is exactly happening and why I'm suffering, why anyone who is listening the word, coming to the church and not practicing the word will definitely will be in the category where Jesus said, you are a person like who is actually building his house on the sand. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So this is very, very important for us to understand uh, uh, who we are. Are we the fool? 
or are we the wise? Jesus is talking about the two category of people. The wise man is the man who is building his uh, house on the rock and even the flood comes and even uh, we see the rain comes, but this house is not going to fall down. There are believers, let me tell you once again, there are people, there are believers, they're very mature. Husband and wife, very mature. Children are very mature. And how the maturity comes, it doesn't come by listening to some motivational speakers, I'm telling you. I see people who listen a lot of motivational speakers and read a lot of books, they collapse so badly. But just forget about it. If you think listening to some kind of motivational speakers and listening to some and reading some good books will help you, no. Life is very different than the books and then the speakers. The life is very challenging. The life is, the ground reality is very, very different. But Bible, the source, the word, logos, the written word of God. When you read, it becomes Rema for you. The spoken word of God. Hello, people of God. Hallelujah. It becomes Rema for you. You, you start understanding what it, exactly it is. God talks to you according to your situation. That is why it's Rema. That is why it is a living word. You're worried, God will talk to you about worry. You're broken, God will talk to you about brokenness. You are in fear, God will talk to you how to come out of the fear. So Bible talks about every situation. So how the maturity comes? By following the word of God. Every husband, every wife, every child who is following the word, who is reading the word. If there is a setup in the house, if there is a culture in the house that every early morning people wake up and they pray and they seek the Lord and they meditate on the word of God. And the same thing they ask their children to do it because there are so many families, the children, they are lost. They are on phones, they are on TV, they do not understand where even... The, even they don't understand where they're heading to it's just there is a, some kind of a false satisfaction in life that hey i'm going to church i'm a believer i'm a christian that is a false satisfaction devil doesn't want to disturb anybody who's going to church he wants you to go to church but he doesn't want you to be a mature believer he doesn't want you to be a mature believer you need to understand somebody help me to preach hallelujah in the last eating meeting, I was teaching people what do, you mean, what do you mean by hallelujah and amen. You know, when you're excited, when you're passionate, when you are filled with joy, when you're filled with anointing, you cannot control yourself. You cannot do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening? People of God. So once again, maturity is very important in the body of Christ. Why people fall in flesh? Because they're not mature. Why people do not understand the flesh? Because they're not mature. Word of God is going to help us out to understand how to deal with the flesh. Nobody, nobody, even those motivational speakers, even the people who are so good on the stage, nobody can handle the flesh very well. Flesh is the biggest enemy. Flesh is the deceiver. Flesh can take you down. Flesh can knock you down. Come on, somebody. Do not take your flesh... Lightly, don't think, oh, it's an easy job, I can handle that. No, you cannot handle it. Ah, uh, it looks so easy, it is not at all easy. That's why you are depressed easily. That's why you're offended easily. That's why you are, you are making long faces easily. That's why you're worried easily. If it was so easy, then it was not easy for you to be offended. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Ah. Handling flesh is not an easy jo job, people of God. Why people get into trouble? Why people are worried? Why people are in tension? Why people, they, they, they have lost the joy? Why they're not laughing? Why they're not smiling? Why, why it is happening? Why there is no joy and passion left in them to worship God, to read His word? It's because it's not easy to handle the flesh. We think it's easy. We think it's, it's I can do, do that. I'm good in it. Nobody. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, our guide. Holy Spirit, our senior partner. Holy Spirit is your comforter, your helper. People who pray and walk in the Holy Spirit. The chances are very high. 
or next to impossible that you fall into any temptation. Once again, I want to remind you, then I'll move forward. You are redeemed. Listen very carefully. Don't miss it. If you do not... Okay, very important. Now listen very carefully. We are redeemed. Our thoughts to be redeemed. I cannot think the way I used to think. I cannot behave the way I used to behave. Maybe I was an easily offended person. I was a short-tempered guy. I was an occasional spoiler. Whoever you were, I don't care, but you are now a child of God. You are now redeemed by His blood. You are now a new creation. A new creation. And now you, have, you got to walk, you got to behave like a new guy. You got to behave like, hey, Bible says one more thing. Peter says we are aliens in the world. Have you read that? Who we are? We are the aliens. We don't know how the world works. We don't know what sin is. We don't know what malice is, what envy is, what pride is. Be like alien. Who? What do you mean by alien, pastor? Alien means you are the child of God. And a child of God in the world is like an alien. We do not understand the system of the world. We are not walking in the way of eye to an eye, but we walk as to forgive people, to love people, to give them chance, to give them opportunity. Hello, hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, God is talking to me. God is talking to me. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm making some sense here. I know I'm talking to you. I know God is talking to us and I know that we are journeying together today and I know we are reaching to a beautiful destiny. Amen. Yeah. Bring your thoughts. Your thought is your first problem. So finish that. Just know one thing. We should have a new thought, a redeemed thought. Just like a redeemed life. You know what do you mean by redeemed life? Your thought is your life. Oh, come on. Who you are. Your thoughts is exactly you are. Who you are. You're not a body. You're not an element. You are your thought. Come on. You're your thought. Zacchaeus was a looter. He was collecting tax and charging extra. And now people say, hey, this man is a tax collector but he's also a looter he looted people what is looting is a thought it's not about a personality you know like oh obviously so it's not about a body it's about your thought how you become liar not a body your body is not a liar your thought come on you're not an offender your, your thoughts so that's why it's very important to work on your thought today. Help yourself to come out of every kind of impurity, of every kind of worldly thoughts, so that you can be, you can live like a child of God. You can live like the redeemed sons and daughters of God. People who are not redeemed in the body of Christ, they will always give trouble. People, listen to this. People who are not redeemed in your house, they will always give trouble. You will understand why my wife is behaving this way. Why, why, why my wife is behaving this way? She is not yet redeemed. She's not yet redeemed. Why my husband is not behaving right? He is not yet redeemed. People who are not yet redeemed properly, their one hand is still out from the baptism tank. Come on. Their tongue is out of the baptism tank. It is not yet redeemed, not yet baptized. They speak grave. They speak death. They speak sadness. They speak death over people. Come on, somebody. You got to meet some people who gives you life. 
who gives who give you hope you got to meet some people who help you to grow you have to meet some people who encourage you who put passion in you who put vision in you who help you to grow so that you can achieve what you want to achieve you don't have to talk you don't have to be with the people who are toxic toxic people are the sign that they need they still need the redemption power of god to redeem them second thing i was talking I, I, this is not my message so i will just move forward second thing i was talking about don't miss a day meditate on the word of god every single day meditating on the word of god people who do not meditate some people they just fulfill the duty they just take the bible and they just uh, try to uh, flip the bible and just say hey oh, i'm reading the bible you know no 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 you got to hold on you got to stay you got to stay on a particular verse you got to stay on a particular chapter maybe for that day you got to meditate on that particular chapter for the whole day your bible is closed but your mind should be open come on your bible is closed your mind should be open and your bible is closed but you should be meditating on that particular verse on that particular uh, chapter throughout the week so that you can help yourself meditating on the word of god am i talking to somebody yes. some people shout hallelujah amen in the church and then after that they once they are going from here they forget everything they even forget how many times they say hallelujah they forget the whole message they just if i ask them just you know, one person pastor meditate it go and open your notebook you're writing here go and open in the weekdays and try to see what god has talked to you on sunday the third thing i was talking about make prayer your habit make what a prayer your habit people who are not a regular prayer warriors people who do not pray every day they cannot fight the flesh and blood you cannot defeat the flesh whose flesh not your brother's flesh your flesh Oh, come on. Otherwise, we will be the new Jesus who will turn every stone into the bread and eat it. Oh, no, you didn't get it what I said. We will be like new Jesus of this era, turning every stone into the bread and eating it and calling it a miracle. Oh, no. Am I talking to some living people here? Oh, uh, hello. Bringing me here today. If you're not careful, if you're not prayerful, you will ask every stone to turn into the bread. You got to be alive in the spirit. So when Satan comes with any kind of deception, you must tell him. You must take a stand. The Bible says you stand before him and he will flee away. You know, God is not calling people for entertainment. God is calling people who can stand before the enemy. And how you stand before him? In prayer. People who do not pray, they talk a lot. They have overconfidence on flesh and they think, I can do that. Come on. Again, I said, we are, we are behaving like a new Jesus of this era, turning every stone into bread and calling it a miracle. It's not a miracle. It is a deception. It is a deception. You got to say no to every temptation, no to every deception that Satan throws at your way, on your way. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's talk about two points, and I'm going to finish it today. I'm going to finish this whole series number four i'm going to talk about number four that's a fresh one for today do not overestimate yourself number two number four sorry do not don't overestimate yourself we got to be safe then sorry hello you got to be safe then sorry 
It's not good to say sorry all the time because we do not believe in safety. People who are not saved, every time they will come and say, Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. For the last five years, I'm praying a sorry prayer. And why sorry prayer? Because I'm not able to understand the safety prayer. Come on. Why I got to do something that God hates and God does not like it and then I have to apologize for it? I'll tell you something. Let me tell you and help you to understand the pattern. Satan do not take people into temptation directly. Satan do not call people into the temptation directly. There is a stage he sets before he makes you fall into any temptation. Before Satan draws you in any temptation, he will set a stage in your life. And what is that stage? A confident in your flesh. Oh, you, you missed it what I said. Try to understand. I'll tell you how. Satan will tell you, brother, you can do it. So you know what we do? Listen to this, what I'm going to tell you. We say, I can handle it. The moment you say, I can handle it, that's the moment he's actually trapping you. Come on, you don't understand that. Hello, 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 hello. We say, I can handle it. We cannot handle anything. That's the foolishness we do not understand as a church. Our Lord was saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Our Lord used to pray every day. Just listen, 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 listen very carefully. He used to pray every day. He used to meditate on the word. He used to talk to the Father every day. Every day, prayer was important in his life. And then the challenge was very tough. And then even the temptation was tough. The exam was tough for him. How can we expect us to live in this era without praying every day and better than Jesus? foolishness I'm thinking to live a better life better than Jesus in this era and without regular prayers foolishness foolishness he called people he calls people Satan calls people and ask them to have some confidence upon their flesh the moment they got confidence upon the flesh I can handle it now Satan can take them easily Satan can knock them down easily Satan can take them away easily you said pastor how do you how do you say this how many of you remember Samson and Delilah Samson was not killed directly Satan do not kill people directly it's a process I'll tell you something more listen to this are you in some regular sickness? Is every now and then somebody falls sick in your family? Flesh. Demonic spirit. You say, for years I have been sick. It is impossible that you move in sickness if your prayer is right. I don't believe that. Neither Bible talk about this. You say, I have been walking in this sickness for last these many years. Okay, there are certain things like BP and sugar. It's like a lifestyle thing. Okay with it. But sickness means something troubling you and not helping you to move. Something troubling you and not allowing you to work. Something troubling you and not allowing you to do anything in life. That kind of sickness is demonic. It's a sign of prayerlessness. It's a sign of some kind of sin it's a sign of some kind of demonic attacks it's a sign of some kind of lifestyle disorder spiritual life disorder and something that is not happening right in the family it is impossible for the body of Christ to be sick it is impossible for the body of Christ who are the body of Christ it is impossible listen to this very carefully I'm going to finish it here. You might think that you would not give in to any temptation. Because you're strong. Because you overcame in your past. But you got to understand one more thing. As long as we live in this corruptible body. 
Ah, I'll repeat once again. As long as we are living in this corruptible body, uh, in what? In this? Yeah, our body is what? A corruptible body. Every time Satan is going to come and knock our doors. Every time sin is going to come and knock our doors. And you say, I can handle Satan. I can handle temptation. I can handle sin. Foolishness. You got to be serious. You got to behave like a mature people. You're behaving like a pigeon. A pigeon closing his eyes. No, 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 no. Nothing is going to happen. Nobody is watching me. I am better. I am safe. I am this. I am that. Now you got to behave like a mature person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever you are, you are a worship leader, you are a choir leader, you are a pastor, you are a leader. I don't care who you are, what is your position, but you need to understand that you are living in a corruptible body. And because you are living in a corruptible body, we all are prone to our sinful desires. Nobody can say, oh, I have reached to such a prayer level in my life that nobody can take me down. No Satan can take me down. I cannot sin in my life. It's Satan again talking to you. This is what I was talking about. He will help you to have a confidence upon your flesh. You will talk such things. You will talk such things. People who have confidence upon their flesh, they say, I do not sin ever. I do not commit sin. Um, you know, I'm very mature now. I'm a prayer warrior now. I fast and pray. I do not watch bad things. I do not think bad things. I do not go to the bad people. I am a very safe guy. I'm a very mature guy. And Paul says, and Paul says, I bring my body into subjection, lest I fall down. I preach the gospel, but I also take care of myself. I do not want that preaching to them and taking myself out of my own salvation can be in the trouble. People of God, are you listening? At least help me. Maybe fifth point I have to talk about once again, but listen to this. So what you have to do then, Pastor, how I can help myself? You got to avoid. It's better to avoid anything that will lead you to sin. You have to avoid anything that will lead you to temptation. You have to watch out where you look at, the places you go, and the people you hang out. And now I will bring you back to the same verse where we started today. Listen very carefully once again. Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. It says Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the weaker or stand in the way that the sinner take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Last night around 12 or 1, no, 1, 1, 1 30 I think I was preparing this message a little bit I was just checking it out I was just checking my sermon I was thinking okay what what, what God you want to talk to us and I got some revelation I want to share with you I was reading this verse you know how you get revelation you don't get revelation from internet you don't get revelation from Google you get knowledge from there revelation you get from directly from the Bible so I was reading over and over and God says, okay, Brian, I want to talk, talk to you three things happening here. I said, okay, Lord, I, I'm ready to listen, Lord. What three things happening? There are three activities and God says, okay, you know what is happening here? Three activities. Walk, stand, and sit. If you have English Bible, walking, standing, and sitting. And Bible says these three activity, these three postures of life, God says, I'm very concerned about people's life. I know where they are standing, where they are walking, and where they are sitting. So what is creating problem in their life? Their walk, their stand, and their sitting. 
I said, Lord, help me more. The Lord says, listen, Brian, blessed is the one who does not walk in the stab of the wicked. Where are you walking today? Hey. Where are you walking today? Which path you are walking today? Where are you walking today? Number two. Number two. Bible says, okay, number one, do not walk with wicked. People who are wicked. Do not walk with the wicked people. And uh, some over spiritual people says, no, we got to walk with everybody. Jesus cannot do it, but I can handle this man. I can handle the wickedness. Ah, that's what I said. We are the new Jesus of this era. I can handle this wicked man. I got to walk. Brother, no worries. No worries. Whoever you are, I'm, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be with you. Some people are dying today because they are walking with the wrong people. Some people have lost their position, lost their anointing, lost their passion, lost their sense just because they have been walking with the wrong people. Number two, number two, standing in the way that sinners take. Now, where are you standing? Ways of sinner or ways of righteousness? We must stand to worship God, I believe. But we should not be standing with the sinners. Now, there is a different thing about Jesus when he stood for sinners. That is a different thing. But standing with the sinners. Number three. Number three. Sitting. Sitting in the company of muckers. Gossipers. Where are you sitting? You know, there was a team sitting with me last to last night. And we were praising God, singing to God, singing glory and pray, praying. And there was a glory talk. It went till 3, p, 3 uh, in the night. I sent you the video on the discipleship group. Wow, what an amazing time. Now it's your time to understand with whom you're sitting with. With whom you're sitting. We got to evaluate ourselves, these three activity. If it says in the Bible, and you know what? Bible is pronouncing a blessing. It says, blessed is the man who's walking, standing, and uh, sitting is right. Ah. Ah. Hello, hello. Blessed is the man who's walking, standing, and sitting is with the right people. Oh, you, you got to understand. You got to understand. Hallelujah. And then it says, but he who, but who's delight, you're delighting. If you are with the right people, you will delight in and meditate in the Bible, in the law, day and night. Praise God. Let me finish it here. Or I'll just finish it. People are there. Be accountable to someone. Okay, I'll preach about, about I'll, I'll talk about this next week. You got to be. The last point is accountability. The last point, if you want to come out of flesh, you have to have a person in your life whom you can be accountable. Okay, let me finish it. Very fast. You could find someone or a small group of people who are strong in faith and are committed to the spiritual growth so that you can be accountable to them. There has to be always an elder sister and an elder brother. But I'm talking about the brother and sister who are mature in faith. Not every brother or sister. And now, what will happen to you? You got to be accountable because you have to make sure that these people are able to hold you accountable. For example, I must say, hey, Karen, you're not doing right, man. You got to be right. Not as a pastor, maybe I'm somebody from the crowd, but he shares his problem with me and I must hold him accountable if he's doing something wrong. But we both have to be, uh, we, we, we got to understand something. 
First of all, he has to go to such people who are strong in faith and committed to the Lord. He cannot go to everybody. Every Tom, Dick and Harry. No, 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 no. And then I must carry a character of Jesus where I can just help him to grow. Not gossiping around about him. Not making fun of him. But helping him to grow. So if he has a problem, if he has a sin, I must have to tell him, hey, you're doing it wrong. And he has to listen. I can scold him. I can pray for him. I can hug him, love him. And I can sometimes... Sh uh, show my anger by not talking today. Uh, don't talk to me today. You're not doing the right thing. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When we are not right, nobody, there is no voice from heaven. How can you say in the middle of your sin, God is talking to you? Huh? Ever happened? No. There is no communication when you, we are going wrong. God doesn't talk to us. But that is for a while. The moment we go back again, maybe in a hypocrisy spirit or in a right spirit, Lord, I am really a sinner. I will not do it again. But inner side we know and even God knows, the heaven knows. A hundred times we repeated that. But still because of his love, he accepts us, he believes us. He says, okay, no problem. One more time. Ah, creating accountability for yourself, make sure more careful you have to create some accountability for yourself so that you can grow in the lord god uses others to rebuke and discipline when we are wrong because he loves us proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 says an iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens another you got to have some iron person in your life. You got to have some iron man in your life. Somebody say, I need my iron man. You got somebody in your life as an iron man who will help you to sharp. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. There is no use to use. There is no... Uh, uh, there is no benefit using an unsharp vessel, an unsharp axe. No matter how much you cut, nothing is happening. But if you're using an iron axe, or sorry, sharpened axe, you can cut anything easily. How we become sharp? What sharpening us? What is sharpening us today? It's the anointing. It's the right counseling, right people in our life. There has to be somebody in your life you can share your sin with. There has to be somebody in your life you can rely and you can believe that this man is not going to mock me or, or, or make fun of me. You got to have some people in your life who are really in faith. And you know, this kind of people can be easily identified by their character. They are humble, they are sweet, they are prayerful, they are walking in the Holy Spirit. Oh, by their behavior, by their aura, by their uh, outer appearance, you can make out they are the people of God. They are the people of God. I can go and share my heart. I just want to finish this year today so that I can start something new next week. Uh, James 5.16 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Two things happening. Two things are happening here. Number one, confessing. And number two, prayer. The one who is confessing is, confess, is confessing with faith that you will understand. And now you got to pray for that man. Oh, you, you got it? If Karen is telling me something, Pastor, you know what? My life is not right. I'm into such, such thing. What I have to do? As a mature believer, I'm not a pastor right now. Just a mature believer. I should not tell anybody about Karen. But I should pray for current Lord, help him to come out of this sin. I should talk to him, counsel him, and help him to come out of such sin. If he's negative, if he's negative, even that time I also I have to help him. If he's in worry, I got to help him. 
if he's in going in a wrong direction, if he's going in the wrong direction, I got to help him. Last thing, last thing, two more things. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, he who covers his sin will not prosper. He who covers his sin will not prosper. But wo whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Never ever try to cover your sin. Some people do wrong and they cover it. Don't cover it. If you want mercy from God and acceptance from people, always stand and say, I have done wrong, I'm sorry. And the moment you say, I have done it, I am sorry, you can be, you are actually having uh, a mercy upon your life because now you will move. But if you cover, you will have guilty that I have covered something. Never ever cover. Don't give excuses. Don't justify. Wrong is wrong. Sin is sin. Don't cover. Just move. Help yourself to move forward. Hallelujah. The last thing. I repeat, maybe let's. Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your soul. We need such leaders. As those who must give account, let them do with joy, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. If your pastor, if your leaders, helping you, scolding you, giving you left and right, and you are not taking it in a right spirit, you are making long faces, you are being offended because what they are teaching you and helping you and rebuking you and correcting you because correction, rebuking and any discipline is not joyful. That the Bible says it is unprofitable for you. Oh, you don't care. What is unprofitable? If you are not behaving right when people rebuke you. If you are not behaving in a humble way if somebody is correcting you, giving you a feedback, I hope you got it. Okay, let me finish this here. If I have to touch it, I will touch it once again next week. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I believe these all five points will help you to come out of any kind of flesh trouble. And it is my prayer that you must overcome your flesh and live a new, a redeemed life with the redeemed thoughts in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless you.